on the last 10 acres of my grandfather's cattle ranch. Living so close to the border as I did, and coming from a Mexican family, you know, of course there was a ton of Mexican music. That had the most impact both on my singing style and on my, my love of beautiful melodies and rich lyrics, because the Mexicans, next to the Irish, I think they write the most beautiful melodies I've ever heard. The shapes of their melodies are just extraordinarily beautiful. <laughs> Growing up with my family in Tucson, I was a harmony singer. You know, we sang, we had a little group, my sister and my brother and I. And, you know, we'd, we'd take turns singing leads, but we sang a lot of harmonies, and that's what I was used to doing. Stone Ponies, Bobby Kimmel wrote most of the songs that we did, so he sang a lot of the leads, and I was a harmony singer. I had some solos myself, but I wasn't experienced as a solo artist. We were driving in the car that belonged to Bobby Kimmel. It was an old Dodge, I think. It was in very bad repair, <laughs> and something happened. The engine froze. It was a horrible sound. I've never heard a car make a sound like that. It was just a howling death cry. So we, and we had to get out and push it, finally. We pushed it into a gas station about a half block away, and the, you know, they pulled up the hood, and they said, oh, no no help with this car. It's never going to run again. You know, it's just got to cart it away to the junkyard, and we were very, totally dejected. You can't survive without a car in Los Angeles. We had all of our instruments, you know, Bobby's uh, huge double bass and our guitars. Anyway, from the back of the of the gas station, I could hear. We knew that they were playing our record on the uh, station, and it was like a regional breakout hit in San Francisco. But we we hadn't heard it on the LA stations, and we knew that if they played it on one of the big LA stations, it was going to be a national hit. But it was that moment that we knew we'd get, we were going to have a national hit. But we, we didn't have any money, and we didn't have any car. <laughs> we were stranded in West LA. Don't get me wrong. It's not that I knock it. It's just that I. I surrounded myself consistently with musicians who were way better than I was. I'll tell you a little secret about the music world. Musicians like what grooves. If you're a good player and you can keep up with the beat, you can not bring them down, they like it. I like everybody else in the room to be smarter than I am, and I like everybody that's playing music in the room with me to be better than I am, and that's how you pull yourself up.
went to work um, you know, on Broadway. I wasn't very good when I started, but I got better. It's interesting, I mean, for me, because I'd never acted before, but, but what it seemed to me was that you, you take a little tiny facet of your own personality, whatever, however uh, minute or, or grand it may be, and, and just allow that to shine exclusively for a, for a period of time. I love to work with the orchestra. The orchestra brings colors out of your voice. Those songs were what I heard my father and my mother singing when I was growing up, and the records they brought home in the 50s, you know, Ella Fitzgerald and Billie Holiday and Frank Sinatra. When I fall in love It will be forever Or I'll never songs are so beautiful again they, they offer such incredible expression all kinds of colors you can have and and sophisticated lyrics that deliver meaning i always say to to people that are starting out in, in music as i say read everything you can read see every art picture go go to every museum go to plays go to the ballet go to every art movie you can because every single experience that you have is like a clear colored lens that goes over layer after layer after layer and enriches whatever it is you're doing. Every picture you see is going to affect every note you sing if you're a singer.